Five years have passed since the world watched as the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe took a stand against the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline just north of their tribal land. And the pipeline continues to be a source of division today. In the first part of this series, Monday night, we explored how No Dapple was a pivotal time of togetherness for Indigenous peoples. Today, we're looking at the impact No Dapple had on the discussion of Indigenous sovereignty. Now, with that same spirit, Standing Rock is embracing a new opportunity to fight for what they believe in. For Standing Rock Tribal member Joseph McNeil Jr., No Dapple was an impactful time for Indigenous sovereignty. It shook. You know, it was like a, a big stone falling in the lake, and those ripples went all around the world. The message resonated far beyond North Dakota. Protecting our land, protecting our sacred sites, protecting our water, protecting our children, and we didn't expect anybody to show up. Thousands of water protectors arrived, including representatives from more than 300 tribal nations. It was an expression of indigenous sovereignty seen by the world. A key moment, September 3rd, 2016. Protesters broke through a fence to access pipeline construction. They stopped bulldozers from turning soil. They were met by private security and charged with trespassing. Von Washizi was working for Standing Rock Sioux Tribe Office of Land Management. What really got the people going that day was we were told, I mean, the pipeline was going in. They uncovered cult cultural resources and they demolished them. They destroyed them. And there's a reason why we have cultural resources. I mean, those cannot be touched at all. You have to find a way around them, a boundary to protect them. In the aftermath, the tribe renewed and deepened their commitment to self-determination. Now, with that same spirit, Standing Rock is embracing a new opportunity to fight for what they believe. We followed Standing Rock Sioux Tribe Land Management Director Joseph Smith to the primary site where Sage Development Authority is building a 235-megawatt, 60-turbine wind farm named Empechui, or Morning Light, in Lakota. You could just see, you know, five minutes ago it was fairly calm. Now it's, it's blowing pretty good, you know, based on elevations and, and, and the wind. Here on Porcupine Hill, Sage Development Authority is building several wind turbines along this ridgeline. Standing Rock owns in Petchewee Wind Farm, so they're doing a lot of pre-development work, including cultural resource surveys. And the idea is they don't build on anything that's sacred to the tribe and its members. And so we've done that in, in some of these uh, turbine sites where initially where the recommendation was to put a turbine, uh, once it was surveyed, they said, well, we need to move it. And they were able to adjust it so not too far away. It's still within the area for, for the best wind. On every level, and Petchewee Wind Farm represents who they are. No doubt Dapple helped get the project financially off the ground. So at the time of Nob Dapple, um, Chairman Archambault got an award, $200,000 from Wallace Global Fund um, for the work we did with Nob Dapple, the work we did for the environment. And he wanted, though, he talked to me and he said, I want this earmarked for um, our new wind farm. The tribe is utilizing their global renown gained from No Dapple to drive an online crowdsourcing campaign that has raised 225000 toward their goal of 420000 So that we have ownership stake in this process through the development phase, through the ownership phase, where we increase our level of ownership over time. It's community directed, it's come from the council, it's going, you know, benefits back to the community for infrastructure, and, you know, it's us helping us, so... You know, that spirit that we led here, uh, you know, years ago continues to carry forward and people's hearts, you know, have opened up and they want to see a win. Keep it with us here on Cakes News at noon. Still to come, thunderstorms can be scary, but they are important for the atmosphere. This week's Weather Wise, meteorologist Amber Wheeler explains how thunderstorms are formed.